You want to do it? Uh, do it. Do it. I can do it. Yeah. Don't want to do it? Oh, um, I want to do it. You want to do it? I always want to do it. You want to go ahead and do it? <laughs> hey guys, welcome to another episode of B-Tech Academy. You're about to get schooled. What do we got? All right, today, Project Danmobile getting some more upgrades. A handling upgrade and a cosmetic upgrade slash arrow, arrow? upgrade. Yeah. yeah. All right, very good. So uh, one of the things we're gonna be doing is uh, installing the Honda lip spoiler. And uh, I was just reading through the instructions because you should always read the instructions first, unless you're not using instructions and then don't even bother. Uh, but, we're gonna use them. But luckily- it's Cause it's real, your car. And it's a real Honda part. Yeah. So but it actually comes with real directions. Yeah, and... but because it's your car, I'm gonna read them. <laughs> so, but here's what's interesting. Here's customer information on the installation. The information in this installation instruction is intended for use only by skilled technicians who have the proper tools, equipment, and training to correctly and safely add equipment to your vehicle. These procedures should not be attempted by do-it-yourselfers. That's I don't us. see any skilled technicians. That's right. <laughs> but we'll show you how we do it. Just well, we in advise... case you have a skilled technician at your house to help you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and don't do it yourself. That's right. And here's something else interesting. It's very technical. This front under spoiler kit should be installed only if the ambient air temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit or above. Right now, it's 63 outside, which probably puts it around 57 in here. 56 in here, we're on the edge. Outlaws. Let's do this. So we ran into our first snafu here. Uh, got the bumper clean, it should be prepped. Now we need to drill holes in it. Looking at this diagram, it says uh, find these scribe marks and use a push pin to mark where the hole needs to be and there's no scribe marks on it. So based on the drawing, it should be directly below this. Boom, boom, right there. It should be right there. There is no scribe mark. Should be one right here too. Nothing. So I think what we're gonna wind up doing is we're probably gonna wind up putting the bumper on and using the bumper to actually, or I mean sorry, the fascia on and figuring out, using that to figure out where the holes need to be. Now, I'm probably actually gonna wait until we attach the front and screw down the ends uh, it says on the the last part is the ends because there's there's shims or spacers. Yep. In case after you put it on, it like pulls it up. Yeah, like if it doesn't fit. Flush. Right. Okay. So that we'll, way you can pull back the thing so it sits flush on the front where the got three it. M is. So we're we're actually going to fit it completely before we do that. I don't want to drill holes and find out we got to shim it out a little bit or something like that and our holes are too far off to one side so we're gonna go ahead and do everything else and then come back to that last and uh, and figure it out there this is what happens when do-it-yourselfers do it totally yeah see they're gonna want us to put nuts behind it yeah on uh, nuts these yep these nuts these nuts <laughs> His his bumper. I'm making him do the drill the holes. Can't be worse than the holes from the the Type R lip. 
they got ripped out unceremoniously. Yeah. Bent the tip. That, that's, that's what I get for buying knockoff pushpins. Done. We are going to uninstall it now and then prep it for actual install installation. What I've done is I've uh, taken each one of these little strips and taped a piece of masking tape to it and then folded it over so we can grab hold of it because once we get the bumper on we need to peel these out and then mash it onto the bumper so that it adheres. Um, Feels like it warmed up in here. It's over 60 now. It's over 60 now. I think we're I think we're safe. We are safe. All right, so we're gonna install the bumper on that, tighten the nuts down. <laughs> Doze nuts. Which nuts? Doze nuts. No, D's. Yeah, okay, D's nuts. So we're gonna tighten the nuts down. And uh, once we do that, uh, we'll go ahead and put it back on the car. And I wanna put it on the car when we peel off the double-sized stick tape. That way we can put a little more pressure on it and uh, get it to adhere a little bit better. Uh, you need to hold it on for like 30 or 60 seconds and then of course it needs to cure for 24 hours so no washing your car. So this is this is not as per the Honda directions because we are we are not actual technicians. <laughs> That's right. Because and I have another confession I stopped reading the instructions after page two <laughs> so sorry. Wait. What? There's four pages. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull these out. That'll expose the uh, uh, double-sized stick tape, and then you need to press, you need to hold it for, does it say on the instructions? It says 30 seconds on the instructions. Okay. If we did 45, that's that's kind of like the do-it-yourselfer would do. Okay. Just to cover their ass. Yeah, exactly. Are you ready? Do we, you wanna start in the middle? No, no, start here. Well, okay, that's smart, that's smart. I'm not gonna argue with that. The instructions didn't cover that? Not that I'm aware. I didn't say where to start, I'm just say. So they both go towards the middle. Okay. So you just pull it gently out. And then apply pressure. You remember last time, Carter, you were talking about how great the roads in Arizona were? Mm hmm Compared to California? Yeah. And then on the way home from Arizona to California, I hit a pothole in Arizona and destroyed that wheel. That's 45. Was that I-8? Nope, I-10. Really? Oh, well that's the problem, we took the I-10. It's Arizona! This is gripping, gripping video. <laughs> Ready for the last one? Yeah. Synchronized pressure. Make a hole around it'll fit any tool. Alright, see how this fits here with the non OEM. Looks like it's gonna be hitting the lip. So let's put some 3M on it and call it good. So <laughs> it doesn't destroy. I mean, the lip's probably gonna get destroyed anyway in real life. It's daily driven, so let's just minimize the damage a little bit. Always keep a little bit of extra 3M double sized sticky tape. You never know when you're going to need it. What are you going to do something that huge? You put like a bed liner in a truck. <laughs> you 
can do a whole body kit without any bolts. <laughs> Over fenders. Over fenders, there we go. What's the torque? Torque spec? Um, let me look in the uh, torque spec is seven. 320 centimeter finger pounds. <laughs> All right, next up, we got the rear sway bar. We got this nice piece of barrage from uh, <laughs> from Progress. It's a uh, 22 millimeter, I think. Right. And I think the rear 17, 17 on the stock right. SI. So five millimeter upgrade should help out a little bit. Keep the car a little flatter on corners. Help the back end come around a little bit if we want to really dive in the corner hard. And for the Falcon Tire Super Saloon Shootout, I'm going to need all the help okay. I can get to try to keep up with uh, the black and blue car. The black and blue, well, it's not going to keep up with the black and blue car. I can guarantee that now. I've seen those big ass brakes, and it's a been actual race car, so it's yeah. it's kind of kind cheating. No, nah, I wouldn't say cheating since you really do drive that car. Yeah, but these two things are not equal. <laughs> all right, so you're out to beat the Accord. I'm I'm about to beat I'm out to beat everybody, but I'm realistic and the Accord will probably do better at the track than my car. Well the track's not the only competition. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. So that's why I got the front lip to make it look better so I can try to, you know, make Win an appearance the and then this to make it ride a little bit better, but not so crazy on suspension. Not crazy stiff like somebody else's car. Right. Alright. Well let's bolt this thing off. We have these little reinforcement brackets set on we have been advised to use. They go up underneath here and get welded in. Uh, this sheet metal is kind of wimpy, so when you put a large sway bar on there, it starts putting a lot of stress on here. So tacking these in to the suspension is going to brace it all so that it doesn't uh, try to rip its way free. Uh, looks like it has a couple of, uh, let's see if it goes on the inside or outside. I think I'll go download the instructions real quick and read half of them. Uh, in order to uh, figure out exactly how they go on. Anyway, I'm gonna do that real quick. Upon reading the instructions, I don't have to weld it in, I can bolt it in. There's actually bolt holes here, and this is probably for model changes or uh, coupe versus sedan, but uh, this part is just gonna go in behind, and they gave us a bunch of hardware to bolt it in place, and bolting it will reinforce it so that it won't tear. So that's good news. I didn't feel like getting in there and cleaning off uh, areas in order to weld it. Although I would have, because I want to make it right. But anyway, we're able to bolt it in to reinforce it. So that's going to be a lot easier. All right, here is the comparison between the OEM and the progress rear sway bar. And you can just see how thin the stock one is. It's only 17 millimeter. Okay. Pilot hole drill. Ooh, smoking. Through. Sweet. Broke on through to the other side. I was seeing that, but we'll get <laughs> DCMA, DMC. Or DMA, whatever. DMC. We'll get screwed. Yeah. All right, so when uh, somebody uh, drilled a hole earlier. You can say it to me. It's, it's my car. So when, so when Aaron drilled the hole earlier, he was trying to use a large drill and get in there and drill the hole in the right spot. It was kind of difficult to do that and the drill drifted a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I was going to enlarge the hole on the, <clears throat> on the uh, control arm, but that's actually kind of difficult. So be easier just to enlarge it on the backup brace, uh, work it in the right position so that we can bolt it all together uh, rather than have to do that. I was going to try to do it on the lathe, or not the lathe, but on the on the mill, on the uh, manual mill. But uh, I don't have a, a bit small enough to do that with steel. I only have a bunch of aluminum bits, so uh, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way with a rat tail file and a bunch of uh, sweat. All 
All right, see if that lines up. How's it look? Almost. I guess I'm only three fourths away there. Perfect. Success. Ovalized and ready to go. No. Oh, look, my my hole drifted too. That's almost identical to the one you drilled. <laughs> yeah. It's so marking it from the other side doesn't work. Putting it kind of in the middle of its range, it's got slide, slotted holes. What'd you say about my holes? They slot like that. I don't know if that's considered a dad joke or not. <laughs> Look at you with your slotted holes. Hey, at least you have a rear saver. Yours doesn't have one? No. Good. It's okay, I'm stiff enough to make up for it. That's what she said. Boom, roasted. Well, this the head is too big to fit in between the nuts and everything, so. <laughs> What's so funny, Carter? Nothing, nothing funny at all. Your sway bar is in. Sweet. Done. <laughs> Done, finally. Took a little bit longer than I expected. Yeah. It, yeah, drilling the holes. Yeah, that and actually kind of following the Honda directions kind of makes it a little bit more involved versus Slapping that puppy on there. Yeah, you know, because like when you get a knockoff lip, you can just throw some screws in there, throw some 3M, and you're, you're gold. You're good to go. And you don't feel bad if you lose one of those. It was like anywhere from $59 to 100 bucks, maybe. Right. But that was a little bit more because it was a real Honda part. So we put it on the real Honda way. The real Honda-ish way. Yeah, I mean, I read two of the four sheets of instruction. So, and I probably read half of the third one. And I glanced Honestly. at the rest. Did That's you? Why. Okay, so we were there. Yeah. And on the progress sway bar, you actually pulled up the instructions on those as well. Yep. And uh, other than both of us drilling a hole in slightly the wrong place, it went perfectly. So, Correct. All right. Correct. And now it's in there. Yep. Uh, the only thing left for me to do is to check it out and hopefully take it for a test drive. Take it for a test drive and uh, see how she runs. All right. Well, I say time to take it for a test drive. Yeah. Just drop it down and uh, go get lunch. Sounds good. All right. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you get the notification. And um, coming up soon is the uh, Falcon Tire Super Saloon Shootout. That's, that's right. basically what we kind of jammed on this for, kind of lit a fire yep. to get some things that was, you know, I've had for a while to get them actually on the yep. car. And, and Mom Mobile and the black and blue car. Yes. So all of our daily drivers. Yep. Time to head to the track. Please, please, please.